Frank was a kid who had an intellectual curiosity from a very early age. So he was the apple of everybody's eye and the love of everybody's life. You know, he was a poor kid and his education was rich. Mom and dad were in kindergarten together and they still have pictures. More than anything else, he enjoys watching a good game or a game well played. Although his training is in the law, I think at his heart he's an educator and I think his mission is to both learn and to teach. Once you take a class at Frank, it doesn't end at the end of the class. It's, you know, I'm doing it for about 32 years now. He's still, uh, he's still my teacher. I remember uh, when Frank was at the Board of Ed. His best days were days when he would go and visit the schools, when he could be with the students. He pioneered the idea of surprise visits to schools, and the principals were horrified at first, but they came to like it. He was the best chancellor that the school system has ever had. Frank Macchiarella is really a risk taker and he's willing to listen to new ideas and if they make sense, uh, run with them. And uh, I think some of the things that he did will help be the reformation of education in a very big way. I was asked to be the head of special education in the school system when Frank was chancellor. I went to his office and asked him what, what was the guidance, what were the instructions? And he said, quote, do right by the children. That was the end of the instructions. We felt he was terrific. And he went on to become the head of the partnership. We called it the partnership. And we were looking for someone who would be best qualified to run such a thing, knew the city and knew the background. And Frank was the obvious person to pick. And uh, we were lucky enough to persuade him to come. He has a perspective that's unique, but very effective. Um, he has concern for the employees, for the clients. He's excelled at every job he's done with intelligence, with integrity, with a kindness and a decency. No one I have more admiration for, no one I respect more or like more. My dad has been uh, a professor, um, a chancellor, a leader in business, academia, um, and yes, a politician too. Frank Mack has written books, he's taught business from books, but most important, when Frank Mack was chief of staff of the Emergency Financial Control Board. I became expert at balancing the books. Vote for the fighting professor, Democrat Frank Macchiarola for controller. He's one for the books. Always fighting on behalf of other people. Frank is a very selfless person. He spends his life giving. And that's what brings him happiness. Frank Macchiarola's life exemplifies an examined life, an interested life, a meaningful life. Someone who has always thought about what he could do for other people. I, I think that's right, and I think he fights vigorously for these kids. Um, and he's always been that way. Because St. Francis had so much to do with shaping who Frank is, that having achieved all of what he's achieved, to then have come full circle and come back to give back to the place where he started is poetic. This is an act of love. I mean, he, he just, you just watch him. He, he, the way he walks around this school, he just loves everything about Who's it. Who's getting help? Yeah, now, what's your grade going average? average? Uh, 3.4. 3.4. You got to get it above that. I think he sees the current student body as a reflection of himself and the mission of this school is the same as it was when he was here 40 years ago. I think that's what the whole thing about Big Dreams is. He knows that each of us can, can take it to another level and then the next level and then the next level and that's what St. Francis is all about. Okay. Remember, you're going to come see me. All right. He's with the kids, 
He uh, is an excellent coach and counselor and inspiration to them uh, to reach for that next rung on the ladder and the Franciscan spirit. If I had to prioritize all the things he's accomplished, he's accomplished many, many good things here, uh, that would be on the top of the list. There they are, every one of them on the screens. The smartest kids in the world got to St. Francis. He had the highest graduation rate of any college in the city. Every student in the hallway, he knew by name, he knew whether they had good averages or bad. There aren't people like this. You meet them once in your lifetime. The first graduation I attended here, I mean, I was like in tears because every youngster that came up on that stage, he knew their name and he hugged them. It's more than words, you know, it's the action part of it. You, you believe it and you live it. If your mission tells you you've got to do something, then you do it. And then help will come. I do believe that God provides. I do believe it works. I haven't been proven wrong yet. It is a welcoming feeling here. In, in some respects, it's the art that you, that, you know, there's the art outstretched arms of St. Francis. You walk in the building, you look up and you say, oh, St. Francis is welcoming me here. You see the faces of people after whom scholarships are named, smiling at you. Everything reinforces your sense of who you are. And you take that and carry it into what you do. He tells everyone and, and, and talks to them about their mission in life is to, to be a saint. So what does that mean? It means you have to act like a saint. It means you have to do saintly things. And I don't mean saintly things are goody-two-shoes things. Saintly things are being respectful, being honest, being forthright, standing up for what you believe, helping others. That's the path to sainthood. And that's what you're on. You either accept that or you reject it. There's no... The only educational contributions that I make today for a nice Jewish boy from Brooklyn are to St. Francis College. And it's because I can come here and Frank will introduce me to a young man or young woman and say he or she is here because of your contribution. They wouldn't be here otherwise. They're special kids. They are the best thing that America will have in the next generation. They're being imbued with the values that Frank and St. Francis represent, and they're going to be what the last generation of first-generation Americans were, the engine that makes America, America. New York is really are reinvented by each new generation of immigrants. And St. Francis College, uh, I would like to believe, has a very important part in that uh, great task of sort of reinventing the possibility of hope and, and new expectation. I mean, 150 years, it means that you've stood the test of time. That means you're doing the right thing. That means a lot of good people came here and poured their sweat, their blood, and their tears, and all their hard work into this building to keep it alive. And I mean, I'm really touched by being a member of St. Francis College, and I, I hope that it continues And my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids, they'll be here 150 years from now, and they'll say, my father went here, and now I'm here for the 300th anniversary of St. Francis College, and so on and so forth. It's faith that allows you to see the future through the present, and to say, we can make that future. That's what we do here.